Hello everybody, it's Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com and in today's video, we got some great stuff here. You know, we're going to talk about the debt that's on the, being sold on the market, the different types. Uh, we're going to talk about visualization. You got to do visualization because that's what's going to set what you've done in the past apart from what you're trying to do now. The This is like one of the biggest secrets that I think we all hear about it, but people don't tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. And for you that see my other videos on how to do it, well, we're just, just like a refresher. Uh, I'm going to talk about an upcoming video that is just going to blow a lot of these uh, debt collectors out of the water because uh, I've been made aware from one of my YouTube uh, uh, subscribers slash customer for the company, one specific lender is doing something that is crazy to where they're actually having the debts paid off and then they're still selling them on the market. I've, I've always talked had uh, videos in the past about how credit card companies are actually paid for the loans even if they go bad because of what they do with all of the data. I'm going to talk about that in this video. Also, please like the video. It helps us be able to, to get more people to get uh, become aware of the information that I'm telling you about here. You know that it's good information. Um, it's legit. Uh, I put a lot into it. Um, I don't make up stuff. I just, we just keep uh, uh, doing stuff repetitively because that's what it takes. Sometimes people don't move. So you have to keep, it's like exercise. You keep doing it and keep doing videos and letting people know what the solutions are and then that day it just pops in their mind that hey i gotta do something about it and i see that a lot with the comments uh where people just on one video they saw it in another video they said i saw it again and i just decided to do something about my situation so please like the videos i appreciate it and i know other people appreciate you helping them find my videos so they can get help and also for yourself, helping yourself. Um, and we're gonna and we're gonna talk about the solutions and the solutions on what we're gonna do. Again, the solutions about these debts that people are selling in the market. So let's jump right into it. We got a batch of this one here is mixed credit cards. They're selling the whole amount for two twenty five hundred dollars. The principal balance is five million dollars in sixteen dollars and sixteen cents. Five million, all these zeros, sixteen dollars, sixteen cents. Two hundred, two thousand ninety-two accounts. Average balance twenty-three ninety-one. Charge-off date twenty o nine. So everything is twenty o nine. One hundred percent past statute of limitations for all fifty states. Pass. This one does not make it at all. We're going to talk about the solution on this in a second. Uh, we got another mixed batch of uh, bank credit cards. 1,069 accounts. Average balance is $707. These are going to be mostly department store cards. And again, I don't mention the names, the bank names, because they'll flag the video here on YouTube. Uh, $707 average account balance. They're selling it for $3,700. Charge off date is 2016. So for not past statute of limitations for all states. The next one is checks. Uh, NS, NSF checks, non-sufficient funds checks from multiple banks. 15,494 checks. Average balance on the checks is $536.86. Charge off date 2004. We know these are all past statute limitations, but I am going to talk about if you have a check out there and it's not past statute limitations, what you could do when we get to the solutions part. Uh, the next one here, we have one credit card company 
huge account balances, fi only 500 cards. Um, and on the checks, they didn't give the uh, amount. They say average balance. Average balance was $536. So it's just 536 times 15, four, nine. Eight million dollars in in checks. That's what that one would be. Eight million dollars in checks. <clears throat> this one here is credit cards. Uh, one major credit card carrier. This is not a mixed group. Four point eight million dollars. Only five hundred accounts. Average balance nine thousand eight hundred dollars. Average, and they're selling it for five grand. Charge off date twenty ten. Past statute limitations. Uh, it says 4 of 2010, 4 13 of 2010. So we're looking at April 13th, 100% of all of these accounts would be past statute limitations. We have payday loan. And I'm going to say the first part of their commercial and then you'll know who this is from. You need money today, call blank. That's who this is. You need money today, call. That's who this that's who the company is. If you've seen the commercial, they run it all over the place. Twelve hundred and eighty-six accounts, seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Average balance five hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Four thousand dollars are selling it for. Uh twenty sixteen is the charge off date. So it's not past statute limitation for all states, but past statute limitations for most states. This one here is mixed credit cards, major credit cards, 4.4 million, 1,413 accounts, charge off date from 2008 to 2011. So almost past statute limitations for all 50 states. Remember, there's only three states that have it long and you have a 10 year it's everybody else is like six years in under uh they're selling it for 5300 bucks uh if you do not know where the statute of limitations is you can go to my website the credit repair shop.com search for statute of limitations it'll take you to a page show you statute of limitations for all of the state so let's get into the solutions and then we'll get into the next step parts of the video with the uh, visualization. I hope uh, everyone stays for that part too. So solutions. Let's talk about the debt first. If it's passed, the first thing that you need to do is if you get a letter in the mail from a debt collector about a debt, they're going to make it like they're collecting it for that uh, company, even if they've purchased it. Or sometimes they may say that they're the new account holder we i've seen that uh recently um like they've been like they're a mortgage company where it just transfers over to the company that's going to collect payments no this that's not what it's really a, what they're really doing they're buying the debt and then they're taking it over and they're trying to collect from you but they keep the original creditor's information in there to, to kind of keep you off balance to make you think that you owe the original creditor when you really don't anymore they've changed it over to them so what you need to do the first thing you get the letter in the mail you need to get copies of your credit reports look in the comments section to see when the original charge off date was on that debt then you need to check statute limitations for the debt in your state for contract law if it's past statute of limitations you only have to do one Thing. simple you don't have to get into any debt validation or anything you just simply need to notify them that the debt that they're trying to collect from you is past, according to the laws in your state is past the statute of limitations for collecting this debt and you demand that they cease all collection activities or you will notify the proper authorities in your state but you still uh, notify the proper authorities in your state to take it a step further and you put CC your state attorney's general's office and whoever handles the licensing for debt collectors in my state of Wisconsin is the Department of Financial Institution. It may be a different department in your state. They will pay attention when you do that. They will know that you know what you're talking about when you do that. 
it will make it go away. They will actually send you a letter and you need to save that letter because they're going to sell it off again. These debts that's been sold 2008, 2009, it wasn't the first time these debts were sold. So they're going to sell it to someone else and uh, and then someone else is going to come after you and all you have to do is use that letter to notify them and then you could be in that potentially have a lawsuit against that company for coming after you for it. Now, if the debt is not past statute of limitations, you go to step two. Step two is to, you've done the first step. Step two is to do a debt validation. You want them to prove, number one, the relationship between you and them now, because you could state, I never did business with you. Are you a sign? Are you assigned by another collector? Are you, uh, did you assume the debt from someone? Did you buy the debt? Are you the one who bought the debt? Because a lot of collectors, what they'll do, there's one main collector, they'll buy it and then they'll job it out, assign it to collectors in different states where that individual that has the debt lives. So they'll, so you need to find out the whole relationship. And you first that part, and then you do a debt validation, which is you want them to prove everything about the debt, your charges, balances, interest rates, disclosures, payoff disclosure, uh, the charges, your signatures, the original contract, everything. Even if they don't respond, you're going to need that document and information if they take it to the next step, which is to try to take you to court. And th this is like making your life a whole lot easier if you do this, because then if they go to court and they don't have that information and they get in front of the judge and they say they need more time, you'll have proof, documented paperwork stating that they've had enough time and that they disregarded it or they just don't even have the information and you would like to have the case dismissed with prejudice so it would never come back ever again that is the solution for that now let's get into and real quick please like the video please like the video also get notified of new videos that are going to be coming out um so that's step one solution if it's past statute of limitation step two not past that statute of limitations but you need to do the debt validation just in case they take it over into suing you in court and um, the next one that we want to talk about is the check system or the bad checks. We talked about on some of these were uh, bad check checks that were wrote, NSF checks that were written out, uh, and they want to collect on those. So there's two things that you need to be aware of. If they sold it to a debt collector, those checks, you can damn near just about disregard ever having to pay the debt. It's just not going to be able to happen. These are just what I call or like sucker type deals because these are not a contract the same way that it was a contract when you had a credit card or a loan or something. Uh, basically, if, it, if there's a lowest level other than loaning your friend some money, this would be the next lowest level, which is to write a bad check. Uh, it's it, depending on how big the check is, but it is very low level on them being able to collect anything for it. So if, if you know that you have a bad check out there, they're not going to be able to do much about it. Uh, I don't even think they're even able to put that on your, uh, your uh, credit reports. They're just going to try to come after you for the bad check. They might try to do a sneaky way to get on your credit reports, but they really can't because there's no payment history. Um, it's it, it. They usually just don't even go into doing that. It's just not enough money into that that they would get from the same account. But uh, so the first thing is if they buy it, you could just do a dispute on with them that you do not have any relationship with them and that this uh, account is closed and that you know basically what you're saying to them is that this is a dispute between you and the bank not between you and them and that there's no 
contract at all. There, I mean, there's absolutely no contract that they could prove with that bad check. Now, the next thing is if the bank is still coming after you and they assigned it to a debt collector to come after you for it, then you're going to need to work with both of them. You're going to have to come up with a settlement. I've seen these checks. If someone wrote a check for $100, settled for $20. I mean, it's worth just getting it out of the way so it doesn't go any further. Because you're going to want to make sure that your name is off of the check system. You don't want to be on the check system. And if you don't know what the check system is, that's where the banks, it's like their credit monitoring area or their credit reporting area for people that are writing bad checks that you know a bank can log into there and if they're if you're trying to open an account they can stop you from opening an account because you're in check system uh you but you can easily dispute information in the check system also so let's back up real quick step one if you if the debt collector contacts you they've purchased the debt the bad check from uh, a bank uh, you just dispute it it's gonna go away 99.99 percent of the time when you say that this is I don't have any relationship with you please cease to desist any and all collection activities regarding this they will go away because there's really not much of a contract that they have with you trust me on this one it's whenever we get these these are like done in no time and we don't it, it goes straight to whoever purchased it um, the next if they do if the bank has just hired they have a collection department in the bank or they hired out to have someone collected that's another situation then uh, what you need to do is just to go ahead uh, get that taken care of unless it's something that was like years like i'm saying like four five six years ago don't uh worry about it uh just do the dispute it's gonna probably go away but if you're needing to get something done uh needing to open up a new account or something a business account or something you want to go ahead and just get that knocked out make sure they take you off the check system when uh you do make that uh settlement okay and then the next thing so that's what we have with those. Please like the video. I know that that was kind of tough following me on there, but please like the videos. And uh, there's a, I'm starting to see a lot of uh, banks starting to sell the check. So that's why I wanted to introduce it into the video today. The next thing that I want to talk about is visualization. You got to visualize yourself accomplishing the goal that you want to achieve and you can't say I'm gonna do it in six months I'm gonna do it in one year I'm, I'm gonna be this at this time what I'm learning even more and more and something had recently materialized for me that I've been visualizing every morning when I get in in the morning just like eating breakfast or drinking coffee which I'm gonna have a quick drink I do my visualization and I and it takes about I'd say a good five minutes I see myself in those pictures I visualize what's happening I uh, attach emotion to it by the feeling I attach feeling to it which enacts emotion on the inside of us because I see myself doing it it's like a picture and so one of the well all of those are materializing but one of them like came to me last night like in a big way i'm talking to, talking about a, a huge way um in essence it's like i know i have a winning lottery ticket and i just haven't taken it in yet that's how big it is it's like winning the lotto i mean seriously let me get this out the way here but so th let me just, just let me sh share with you how to do a visualization uh, treatment for success. First thing is you need to know what you want. You have to make a conscious decision of what you want and you need to write it down. And so you write down what you want 
And then what you do is you visualize yourself having it in the picture, you. So if you want to visualize yourself with an 850 credit score, what you do is you close your eyes and you see yourself looking at a piece of paper and it has 850 and you can say like, with one of the bureaus. I don't want to mention the names of the bureaus because it's flag videos when I've done that. So you'll have like, you'll say like 850 and you um, and you see yourself looking at your credit reports and it says 850 here, 852 there and 875 on that one. And you see yourself seeing the name of the bureau that that 850 belongs to, that the 852 belongs to and the 8. 60 or 75 whatever I said on there you see yourself with that you then uh, allow yourself the feeling of having that score when you first do it the first time you may not get to the feeling stage but you have to get yourself to the feeling stage and the way to do that is to is to uh, imagine how you would feel if you had that score and then it'll start coming out of you now something that you have to be careful of a few things you need to in a way see yourself looking at the paper so if you imagine yourself like this is a, a, like a camera and it's looking at you looking so you can see yourself in that picture one of the mistakes that I've made in the past and I've been been made aware of when you visualize if you don't visualize yourself in the picture you're actually not technically visualizing the right ways not to say that some things won't come but it's going to make it a lot harder because you don't see yourself in that picture so everything that you do you must see yourself uh, the, and then you need to do this like breakfast like every day when you wake up uh you do all your other stuff if you go to your office or if you're sitting in your car or if you're at, at home <clears throat> this needs to be part of your daily activities it it's a must um i'm telling you it will work out so if you uh whatever you're looking to to make changes in you must bring that change into the now and you must visualize yourself doing that now because when you get to that uh, future date and you are that person, you will not remember much about where you are today. And the reason why is because you've changed that person. So why not go ahead and change that person, start visualizing you as that person, you as that having that goal. Because then it's going to speed up the process. Time time does not really exist time does not really exist time is put here for us to be able to cope with ourselves because if you look back think about how fast time has flown i'm 51 years old and when i look back man 51 years have went by quick so time uh is just put here as a way for us to be able to cope with day-to-day -day life day-to-day -day activity um, someone could have said uh, the time is uh, fifth uh, you know not 24 hours 27 hours what we what we know the difference and uh, you, you might be saying well yeah because the Sun go up and down all that stuff well in some places in some states you know that it's dark uh, four or five six months out of the year in Alaska so time has nothing to do with what we see with uh the sun going up and down and all that stuff. no that's you know that's just the operation of our planet and our solar system but time was put here made up into existence to allow us an ability to be able to cope with day-to-day -day activities so visualize yourself having good credit visualize yourself paying off debt visualize yourself uh having more money having more time having more freedom and if you if it feels like it's hard to do then you're doing it wrong because if you 
have a goal to have 850 credit and you're having a hard time visualizing yourself with 850 credit, then you're doing it wrong because if that's what you want, you should feel exhilaration, uh, you know, to get to that. So that's what you need to allow yourself to feel. And don't get into the logic of it. You might say, well, the reason why I'm having a hard time is because now my credit score is 540 and I don't know how I'm going to get to 850. That is not of your concern. Solutions will come about to you. People like me will come to you. Ideas will come to you. And you will get to your goal. Don't get stuck in all the in-between stuff because when you get to the 850 goal, are you going to worry about all the things that you did to get to there? Most people forget about all the things they did to get to there. So make sure you do it. So now let's move to the last thing on the video here. And please like the video. Like I said, it's not going to be like it was before. It's going to be different this time because I'm giving you all the pieces to be successful with repairing your credit. Uh, I'm giving you the information to be able to, to uh, dispute it the proper way. Uh, with the creditors and the debt collectors and I'm also giving you the side that a lot of people don't go into because they really don't understand it is that visualizing yourself being successful that's why people are not as successful as they can be because they don't understand the visualization part think of all of the people that are successful and one of the things that they have in common is that they say they visualize themselves being successful even if they consciously don't understand what they did, they always visualize themselves with the goal and then things in between happen to help them get there. Either people or ideas come, came in their own mind. Next thing is in an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about something that I've been made aware of about uh, one particular uh, lender that is actually buying insurance against people who will who who won't pay their loans so i've talked about it in the past with debt collect with well, not with debt collection company with cr credit card companies where they've actually with a lot of accounts made up the losses that, that they had they just put it into a different category on their balance sheet but what they'll do with normal regular credit card companies is think about it you have a credit card they know your spending habits they know what you like to buy what you like to eat clothes you like to wear places you like to shop all of these things just think about that and it's just you and this company can sell your information to if not hundreds, thousands of different companies that want to sell you products that they know that you're interested in. That's called target marketing. So they could sell your information. Let's just say that they, they sell your information for $8. And the reason why I said $8 is because I own money in companies, stock companies. Let me answer my phone real quick. My apologies, that was an employee calling in sick. Um, I've made it a rule now that if employees are sick, I'd rather them not come into work. Uh, they don't have to worry about getting paid. They got sick days, but I don't want them coming to work to get other people sick. And also, you know, I, I won't get into it in this video, but my wife uh, has a uh, medical situation where she cannot get any uh, viruses or anything uh, she almost passed away a couple of times from that uh, but we won't get into that okay so uh, so back to my example and I own stock in companies and uh, what I've seen is uh, where they sell the information to people they sell them to companies and I've seen where they consider the the uh, back-end value of a credit card holder 
is worth eight dollars and just think of all of the different businesses that sell products and services if you own a home or not that's why they want to know all that information about you because they could sell your information to all these companies uh, so eight dollars let's just say that there's 500 companies they've made four thousand bucks from selling your information to companies and uh, that could be on a monthly basis. That could be on a daily basis. There, that could be selling from state to state. All I mean, just it's the ceiling is huge, and so I've always known that this was happening. And but you can't use that against them to say that they've already been paid because they put that into another category and they charge off the account or write off the account and put it into a, another category on the book. So it you can't even really use that against them uh, I do think it's worth bringing it up in court or get pushing them into being if you know that they've sold your information to be able to push them into doing a 1099 C uh, to get them to potentially do that because they don't want that to be widely known even though we know it but it's not widely known that they sell our information um, so but with this one that I've been made aware of from one of the YouTube uh, subscribers here on the channel is that this company is actually buying insurance against people to do it. So it's actually being paid off by them making claims on the account and then they put it into another category on their books and then they're selling off the debt. But this is debt that technically is paid. And... Uh, documents were sent to me I did not get a chance to review them it's a lot of paperwork I'm gonna review them and I'm gonna do another one of those extensive videos talking about this because I think that this is gonna blow some stuff out of the water because this is a major company in uh, the industry now that are doing these what I call these department store loans and these online vendor uh, uh, loans so people can sell their products and services so that's going to be in an upcoming video so get on the notification because you're going to want to see that video because I'm pretty sure every just about everyone that watches the videos have has dealt with this company or the company that their parent company name is because they they were actually so deep into doing this that they changed their company name so they so people would think that it's someone else that's doing the loans these uh loans to to people uh so all right we're going to close out the video please subscribe to my channel please like the videos i know it was a lot of information in here but uh, I, it just has to be this long this is real deal stuff uh, if you need help with your credit go to my website thecreditrepairshop.com if you need your credit reports and scores, remember everything starts there. And I'd really appreciate if you use the one that I have here, your the number three scores.com. You'll see that also on the video. Again, like the video, uh, get, get the notifications of new videos that's coming out. Subscribe to my channel, share, post your comments. I do answer them. Uh, post your questions. If you do have questions where you want to send me information send it to the email that I have here I'm going to be setting up another email but send it to the email that I have on the screen here and put in there that you're a YouTube subscriber you must be a subscriber to the channel for me to answer it so because my employees I do not allow them to get it to answer those questions uh, I only I'm the only one that answers the YouTube subscriber channel question so please uh, uh, do that that'll uh, be a big help all right until next time this is Stephen Williams founder and president of the credit repair shop .com. thank you for your time